So I'm on the latest version of Advanced Skeleton out at this time, release 6.552, and I'm using Maya 2025. The previous release, 6.545, has some improvements for functionality in Maya 2026, but I would rather not risk using 2026 for this project as this is the first update mentioning fixes that make advanced skeleton more compatible with my 2026. So I'm going to assume it's not uh, that stable. One thing I'm going to try to do in this course is utilize non-destructive rigging methods that will allow me to update to newer versions of advanced skeleton without too much hassle to the work in progress. After the skinning is done, I am definitely going to save my skinning data just in case I need to reload it. But as far as custom rigging choices and corrective deformations are concerned, I don't want any updates to advanced skeleton or the toggling back and forth between the fit skeleton and the rig to break any custom additions I have added. Advanced skeleton has a keep all feature in the build tab that helps you preserve the current state of the rig when you toggle back and forth between the fit skeleton and the rig, and also when you rebuild. So I will be relying on this feature heavily to keep my custom rigging intact when I switch back and forth. There is a recommended workflow for rigging with advanced skeleton that requires you to first create a new scene and reference in your character model. I will not be using this approach and I will explain why shortly. The first thing I'm going to do is separate the tail from the body so that the tail can be rigged separately. I've chosen to do this because after running some tests, I realized that it's going to be easier for me to get a scalable tail that propagates to both IK and FK systems if the tail has its own global or root control separate from the main rig. If you remember, in my dance animation course, I want to be able to scale up the tail for a certain portion of the dance sequence. It's also a nice feature to have on the character rig. After attempting to scale a tail that is connected to the main rig, I ran into some issues with scaling either not propagating down the joint chain for IK, FK, and in some cases where I did get it to work, it left some of the IK controls in a not so intuitive position thereafter. Rather than go into the advanced skeleton rig structure and make alterations, I've decided to bring the tail into the main rig file and connect it to the main rig. And since the tail is a separate piece of geometry, it facilitates this approach. If the tail geometry and the character geometry are one singular mesh, I would definitely have to find another approach. So it's good that they're not connected. This, by the way, is also how I'm going to be dealing with the headphones and the sunglasses. They are going to be rigged in a separate file and brought in to be attached to the main rig. Towards the end of the course, I'll make sure all these important parts of the rig are selectable and keyable from the main picker or selector. So this is a good time to segue into why I will not be referencing in the published model of the character to get started. If I start off with that workflow and extend this workflow to the rigging of the headphones, sunglasses, and tail rigs, then to get those three assets in the main rig file, I will have a nested referencing issue this early in production. The only referencing I want to do with this character rig is when it's time to reference it into an animation scene to animate it. When that happens, I want the rig and all the sub rigs attached to it to come in as a singular file with all geometry, bones, and control in that reference file. So when it comes to the headphones, sunglasses, and tail, I'm going to rig them to completion, then import them into the main rig file. In order to avoid any namespace clashes with advanced skeleton, I will keep their namespaces on import or give them a prefix to deal with all clashing nodes. This does mean that the headphones, sunglasses, and tail will not respond to the build pose button in advanced skeleton, but that's fine. The go to build pose is more of a developer tool. I'll create a zero script for the imported assets and eventually delegate the zeroing of these assets to the final picker or selector for this rig. Okay, so I'm going to isolate the tail by deleting everything else in the scene. Then I'll center the pivot, snap it to world 000. 
Now I'll rotate it so it's oriented correctly and translate it so it's above the ground plane. Now I'll freeze the transforms to zero out the transforms and reset transforms to get the manipulator pivot back to world 000. I'll save the file as Kiwa Tail. Now it's ready for rigging. Let's get back to the main file. Advanced Skeleton has a cool auto place feature that will automatically place your joints for you. I will not be using this feature because joint placement for this character has to be fine tuned to get things deforming optimally. And I would rather do it manually so I can inspect each joint meticulously. You can still start with the auto place feature and work on fine tuning placement afterwards. But this character has some very stylized proportions and appendages like the ears that are going to confuse the auto place tool. I will most likely end up moving every joint after using auto place. So I would rather not even go that route. So I'm going to skip the process of defining meshes at this stage, as this is only a requirement if you want to use the auto place feature. So for this character, I'm going to start with the biped bendy template. This is a stylized character and I will be counting on the bendy controls at animation time to do a lot of smearing, jiggling, and other cartoony motion. All right, so let's jump in and load in the biped bendy template. So I'm going to go to the fit tab and I'm going to look for biped bendy. This is uh, the regular biped. We're looking for this one that has the bend controls. I'm gonna select it and import to load it in. And it comes in really small. I think it says it's a tenth of a scale. And we're going to look to scale it. So I'm going to select this parent node, this uh, fit skeleton parent node, which will come in very handy when it's time to rig the tail and the headphones and the sunglasses. I'll talk about a very interesting approach. But I'm going to scale this up. Just hit the R key to bring the scale and scale it up. And I'm going to go to shading and select x-ray joints. And these joints are a little too large. So I'm going to go into the edit tab. And then I'm going to under here, the display joints. I'm going to reduce the size. This is the same command that's accessible through display. It might be animation joint size right there, but it's nicely accessible in the advanced skeleton window. Now, before we continue with placement, I'm going to talk about a setting, uh, the offset parent matrix setting, which is under the rig tab and it's over here. And it's recommended that you check it so that the rig can use offset parent matrix for faster performance. But as of version 6.5, most of advanced skeleton is using matrix nodes for constraint setups, whether or not you check this button. Uh, the reason why I'm reluctant to check it is because I have run into some issues when using a particular IK label and I'll show it to you right now. So here's a new scene and I'm going to add a joint to the scene by writing joint semicolon in the mail window and then I will increase its radius and then I will duplicate it, move it up, parent it to the root and then I'll just resample it with advanced skeleton by coming here, go to resample. And I am looking for joint one, joint two, the joints I've just created, and I'll hit four and I'll go resample. So now if I decided to add IK labels to this, so let me add IK labels, uh, go add, and I go to one and add, and I go to two and add, three add. Now this should build correctly and give me a IKFK controllers. But if I check offset parent matrix on, I'm finding that it stops in the middle. So let me select this and go build skeleton. So for some reason it stops in the middle of the build because this is not the complete thing, right? It's shown the FK controllers showing the IK controllers, but the cross controller that it provides you to switch between IK and FK is 
not here. And you saw there was an error related to constraints. And I deduced that it has something to do with this. Now this is a new scene with the same, pretty much same setup. And if I keep offset parent matrix unchecked and I build, everything builds correctly. So um, I'm sure this won't happen with every single IK label. I don't think a offset parent matrix is going to produce this error, but this numbered labeling is very important, uh, especially for this course. I'm going to rely on it heavily for a lot of IK FK features for particular appendages. But yeah, this is how it's supposed to behave. So you should be able to select the cross and then you can switch between IK, FK, and IK controls, and it all works correctly. So for this course, I am not going to check offset parent matrix. All right, so this is the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll start placing these joints.